recently we had this sort of, uh, I don't know any other way to describe it other than debacle with uh, Google's Gemini product um, producing what can only be said as uh, not really hallucinatory, but really kind of, uh, you know, generative uh, artwork based upon some encoding uh, that it had been given. I wonder, what are your thoughts on this recent you know, kind of development? And, and is this endemic to AI uh, in general, or is it is it really just specific to to the Gemini folks up up in uh, Silicon Valley and elsewhere? Uh, what was the problem there? You mean we don't want DEI for Nazis? That's uh, <laughs> only want a diverse range of Nazis there. Um, <laughs> well, they it have was, to be it was yes. hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it it was the the reductio ad absurdum of all of this woke identitarian uh, uh, politics that uh, so many of us have been resisting in recent years. And I mean, this, there have been many examples of this, but this was almost too good to be true. The fact that you literally could not get a white Nazi out of this <laughs> this algorithm uh, or a white Viking, apparently. I mean, it was just all, uh, it was all diversities as far as the eye could see. I, you know, yeah, it was a debacle. It was embarrassing. I, I think it's, I think they probably took the, you know, they're so woke over there that I think they probably got embarrassed in the wrong direction. Like the fact that they couldn't get any white Nazis, they probably view as an insult against people of color, right? Like this, this, this was the real indiscretion that they de depicted brown people as Nazis, right? I mean, the whole thing is so colossally moronic and and painful to behold. I, I just, when we're going to pull back from this particular brink, I, is anybody's guess? I, I I feel like the pendulum is swinging back because the the just the moral arithmetic just so obviously doesn't add up. I mean, this is reverse racism. And the fact that the phrase reverse racism gets you castigated as a racist, I mean, like that only a white supremacist can utter that phrase w with a clear conscience, apparently. It's, it's awful. I mean, it's just a complete pollution of our moral conversation and our political conversation. And it, it will be the destroy. If we don't arrest this slide into stupidity, we, we, it will be the, the destruction of the Democratic Party. It will guarantee us four more years of Donald Trump. I mean, it's just it's so wrongheaded on every level that we just we, we, we need an exorcism to dispel this nonsense. And, and, you know, hopefully that is forthcoming. I mean, there's a there's a piecemeal version of that happening on on a thousand podcasts, presumably, and Substack newsletters and in various places in the media. But it's, it seems very difficult for people to keep two indiscretions in view simultaneously. And it's, it's, it's the one on the left, which we've, we've just begun speaking about, this, this identity politics, and then and the one on the right with, with uh, populism and Trumpism. And many people feel that they can't keep both of those grotesque objects in view. They, ha they have to focus on one to the exclusion of the other, and they can't even admit the nature of the other. And so that that's really the problem I see that is so toxic that we just... We're becoming more and more siloed into echo chambers that are self-confirming and and mutually incompatible. And it's just we we need people in the center who can speak sanely about the untenability of, of both extremes. And and so and that's what I try to do on my podcast. I'm eagerly awaiting the episode where you where you reveal that. But you know, for me, it it kind of revealed a notion of the miscommunication, perhaps the misunderstanding in the popular lexicon of, you know, accuracy and precision and, and that, you know, these things were very, uh, very inaccurate. In other words, you'd ask them for the founding fathers and they would depict, you know, some uh, warriors from, you know, the Cherokee nation or something like that with a white wig. I w they, they got the most superficial details, right? You know, the, the Washingtonian pow you know, pow powdered wig and, and so forth, but they got the, uh, you know, the core details completely inaccurate. But they were very precise in that they were highly reproducible. They all had more or less the same style. You could ask it a thousand different ways. It was, as you said, it was impossible. So, so in, in scientific circles, as you know, you know, there's a difference between accuracy and precision that sometimes gets conflated. That that they're, they're synonymous, but they're really quite different. And I wonder, you know, if if there ever will be an opportunity for these two different kind of branches of the of the human mind, the accuracy maybe in, in terms of numeracy, precision, uh, or being different, but but the artistry, how you can have something that's artistic that's fundamentally subjective, um, and then it's going to be generated by objective laws. I thought maybe we talk about the Turing test and this concept. And you asked our mutual friend Cal Newport um, 
a while ago, you asked him, you know, if he'd go back and kill Turing <laughs> to suppress, you know, the possible AI apocalypse. Uh, I know you're being tongue in cheek, but um, but I, I was I don't, curious. I don't what... remember that actually. That's interesting. I have a. Well, he said it to me. On uh, he has a new book out. He was just on okay. my podcast. So I can ask him again. But if you could go back, you know, Warren Buffett said, you know, if he could have his choice, he'd go back and kill the Wright brothers because you know no airline has ever made a dollar in profit in 116 years. Do you think that there is this kind of uh, mis misapprehension of what AI is really going to be, when it's going to be achieved? I've proposed that you know we we really need to see an artificial intelligence create new laws of physics, for example, before I would take it seriously. I mean, these things are mimicking, perfectly mimicking. The imitation game is flawless at mimicking, as you say, a woke, you know, 29-year-old uh, uh, new employee uh, at, at Google, you know, kind of anti-James Damore employee. So what would you have as, as a replacement? Or do you think the Turing test is adequate as it is? What, what would convince you that we've achieved AGI in a functional, practical way that matters to people? Well, I think the Turing test as traditionally conceived is, is a bit of a red herring because depending on the context, these the AIs we have either pass the Turing test or they pass it so well that they fail it, right? I mean, it's obvious that a human can't be producing what ChatGPT produces when you ask it a question. It's just too, it's too fast. It's got access to too much information. It's too coherent. You know, I mean, you, you can literally ask it, give me, you know, 170 bullet points on you know roman history and it'll give you 170 bullet points on roman history like this is just immediately without without uh, pausing right so people can't do that so it's it's um it's already superhuman in some ways even though it makes errors that people wouldn't make uh and i think once we get to true agi where you know every capacity we care about is is being emulated at a at a human level it won't be at a, a, at a human level. It'll be at a superhuman level, you know, the, really the moment we deploy it, right? In the same way that you're, the, you know, the, the calculator in your phone is already superhuman for arithmetic, uh, we're not going to dumb these things down. So once it's deployed, you know, it'll, it'll be superhuman. And being superhuman, it will fail the Turing test in some way. Because to, to remind listeners, the Turing test was simply this, this um, thought experiment where you're given you know, two terminals and you're interacting with both, and you 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 can't know what you don't happen to know which is human and which is a machine, and you can't figure it out based on the kind of interaction you're having with it. I, mean, I just think that's that's never going to be our circumstance because it's these things are, are going to be too good. There's a few things that that confuse people's thinking about this. What one is the variable of consciousness, right? People or you know sentience, awareness, whether there's something that's like to be a system. And I'm I'm agnostic as to whether or not consciousness will emerge out of the complexity we're, we're uh, building into our machines. Uh, it may or may not. I think the most likely thing is we won't understand how consciousness is related to physics at the point at which we build true AGI. I mean, we'll, we, will not have, we will not have completed a, a science of consciousness yet. And so we will be agnostic as to whether the, these systems are conscious, but they will seem conscious. We'll, we'll build them so as to seem conscious, or at least certain systems will be built that way. And seeming will seem to make it so. I mean, we'll just we'll lose sight of the fact that it's an interesting question to wonder whether they're conscious because they will, it'll be so persuasive. I mean, they will pass that Turing test so persuasively, especially if you're imagining something like humanoid robots, you know, a la Westworld, right? To just imagine being in relation to something that really is out of the uncanny valley, you know, with with in, in terms of facial expressiveness and and appearance. And you, um, you're now talking to it, and it understands you better than any person has ever understood you, and it has access to all of your data. And you know, so this is Siri, you know, in the flesh, who's a, practically an oracle now. Uh, she, she or he knows so much. Um, I think it's just going to be, you know, wh whether or not it's conscious. You know, if you if you uh, destroy that that machine, you're going to feel like you've murdered something. That it is a center of of conscious life, whether or not it is, because it we will it'll have seem that way so persuasively.